we're going to be talking about our ongoing Kickstarter. Uh, with me today is uh, Doug and Sebastian, and Christopher will be with us in a bit. Uh, working in the background is um, James McCann and uh, Murphy. Um, we also have another team member, uh, Lee Wanika Miller, who's uh, writing for us and working with us on our Kickstarter. And today we're just going to talk about some of the stretch goals and the updates and uh, the social stuff. And uh, yeah. So what are you guys working on today? I was finalizing the uh, Protoceratops cart, which is one of the it's one of the stretch goals, or is that a social? No, it was a regular stretch goal, right? Right. Yes, regular stretch goal, not social stretch goal. So it's finalizing it, making sure it's all shiny, pretty awesomeness. You guys want to see what I'm working on? Check this out. So we've got that, and I've got – one second. I'm going to share my – let me share my screen. There we go. I've got one of our secret stretch goals. Ooh! So this is our this is our sci-fi rider character on the Apatosaurus. All right, no wait, this is the Parasaur Parasaurolophus or Duckbill. Or beefcake. He's all set up up here. Or beefcake. <laughs> beefcake. Yes, very cool. So he's all set up up here, so you guys can see him. Hold on a second. We'll zoom in. We'll take a look at him in just a second. I'm going to clear my screen, get a bigger view. Um, yeah, what do you, uh, what do you, you guys want to? Hey, look at this. Ta-da, oh, I should have. There's Craig. <laughs> look what yes, the Chris, dragged in. <gasps> Chris joined us. So this is the character here, and he's designed to sit in this particular saddle. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to make him, um, uh, standalone character, but we're also going to make him available for uh, the saddled uh, rider uh, sets. Um, but yeah, we we put him together uh, last couple of days uh, along with our other one. Doug, do you have yours? I have him right here in the real world. Ooh. Ah, I dropped him in the real world. I, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. <laughs> so just call me Captain Dropsy. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so now he's ah! now he's supposed to sit now he's sitting on the bareback, right? But he's really meant to sit with the saddle, right? Yeah, I designed him around the saddle. Um I didn't have a printed copy of the one with the saddle here. But I wanted to, you know, show what he can do and it's and it, it looks pretty cool. On there. Yeah. That one that one came out nice. That was the first one we got done. Yeah, um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah, this is a secret stretch goal. We we're gonna we're we're gonna continue doing secret stretch goals only because uh, you know we think that it's it's nice to be surprised about things and and to know that there's there may be Easter eggs or surprises that come through uh, our given projects. Um, that being said, we haven't reached all our social media goals, and we're gonna be asking you guys to try and reach out to your friends to share. Uh, uh, and promote uh, the Kickstarter so we can open up the last of the social media goals. Um, if you Primarily know anybody, Twitter. I want to yes, say I think all the other ones. I think all the other ones are open. I think it's Twitter that we're lacking on. We need some more retweets. Go tweet. Yep, we need some more retweets. Sure. Um, ideally, ideally, you'll ask them to retweet it, uh, re-Facebook it, repost it everywhere and anywhere they can because we really just need to get. <laughs> Tell everyone. <laughs> Tell your grandma. Um, because you yeah. want this. Yeah. You Show grandma the dinosaur so you can get the barrel cart. Yes, the barrel cart has yet to open up. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Stretch goals. Share things. <laughs> Stretch those goals. Yep. Uh, let's see. And done. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, it's been a little while, but it has. Why? Why are who's playing audio? A piece of cardboard. What? I think I think that's James is playing some audio. That what people have been asking. All right. So anyway, uh, so I'm going to go over to the Kickstarter real quick. And making noise. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go over to the Kickstarter real quick. Welcome uh, to the show, guys. Yeah. Welcome You're to right. the show. Welcome to the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. So 
uh, uh, Chris, do you want to tell us about uh, what's what you've got printing? Uh, uh, right while now, I look for this, I've got the the Ankylosaur. I've got a friend who just got a resin printer here, since I don't currently have one, and uh, he is test printing the Ankylosaur for us. I know that James had gotten a few of the other pieces done um, on one of the initial versions, but we hadn't gotten everything all together yet. So hopefully, I will have a physical one in hand here for the next day or so, so that at least by our last stream, I can show you guys what that looks like. And if I get an opportunity, I'm going to try to throw a quick coat of paint on it so you guys can kind of see um, the level of detail that's going to come through on that guy. It's uh, I'm super stoked to see something that I made finally get printed. So it's it's going to be awesome to, to hold that thing and be like, look what I made. Yeah. Behold what I have wrought. Exactly. Behold all that I have created no um one of the other things is too is uh we do actually have uh our seven thousand uh stretch goal unlocked now at this point which is the Ooh. pack three which is the stack of barrels um yep. for the small open wagon uh that happened earlier today i think either that or late last night one of the two so we're there on that one um but uh Outside of that, I think uh, right now I'm working on cut up on things to make sure they print right. Ooh. Yeah, the loading the loading dock for the loading dock for uh, our sauropod isn't open yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, so as someone referred to him, beer cake with his yeah. with all of his kegs <laughs> and what have you hasn't yeah. opened up yet. Did we reveal his hat yet? I don't think yeah. so. Do we want to talk about the hat yet? We should. We, we need to show the hat. Should we is, is, the, is the is the is the hat a pri uh, is the hat a secret stretch goal? The hat was going to be a secret. Thank you. Oh. oh, I don't know what you're talking about. What hat? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like a super secret. Like, hey, thank you for backing us here. Have this. You can talk um, about that. But we can. Can, can you go ahead and bring that up, Doug? Um. Yes. Um. So early on in the project, <laughs> was, I gotta open up again. Well, well, he opens that. We're gonna talk about it. Early on in the project, uh, Chris and Doug and I were goofing around as we usually do when we talk about when we're having a design meeting. Mm -hmm. And Doug, <laughs> Doug put two beer casks or two beer or two barrels on the side of his head and said, "We should make a beer hat." <laughs> so and I immediately chimed in right afterwards. Yes, we should. <laughs> so we, so we have a beer hat that comes that's going to come with uh, our our uh, uh, sauropod. Now the sauropod is uh, what's what's his name? Do we know what his name his proper name is? A patasaurus. A patasaurus. I think, I think it was a patasaurus. Yeah, I, I want to mention this. We've had a couple of people ask for a brontosaurus. The brontosaurus is the apatosaurus. Uh, brontosaurus is a is not a real animal. It's it's the wrong head, so we're actually building uh, the real animals, uh, not the not the uh, not the mistakes that were made in the early days of uh, um, digging up dinosaurs. It's like Istanbul in Constantinople. Yes, <laughs> which I don't think either of those names are relevant anymore, are they? Still, it's Istanbul. Still. Uh, this, I, well, anyway, we'll talk geography another time. Istanbul, not Constantinople. Been a long time gone, Constantinople. <laughs> okay. Um, so I I don't think that our stretch goal number 14 and 13 are open, which is the backer's choice stretch goal and the animal pen. Uh, and I say animal pen. It is a it is a animal pen for dinosaurs, so it's a big animal pen. Oh, yeah. uh, you're not going to keep your gerbils in there because they get through. Uh, let's see here. Back in choice number two. Uh, I don't think that that's open just yet. The tower airship loading pad. We are, are we already building that? Didn't we talk about that last night? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that, that is, um, that is train pack number three. We're actually working on that one right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here we go. The Twitter goals were missing the large open wagon and the large beer keg for the large wagon. So that requires uh, 16 out of, or 20, it requires uh, 25 and 50 uh, retweets. So we're kind of short on that. We're currently at 16 on both of those. Um, 
Let's see what else. And I think that's pretty much that's pretty much the end of that. There's there's always something I'm going to miss because I'm trying to read it off of the Kickstarter. But hey, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's share some a couple of things so they can see it. Go ahead. Put the hook. And we're uh, waiting for Doug to find his file. But yeah, I'm trying. I didn't know I was going to be asked to find that file. Hey, uh, so, hey um, Chris. Do you have those uh, renders of it that I gave you? Uh, I should. Hold on. Let me uh, let me see what we got. Which I don't one? remember which file it was that I'd actually had the... Uh... Oh, there there it is. I, I think this might be it. Is this beer head uh, and pose? I was going to say I have them. So I can pull them up either way. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull those up. Uh, definitely. I, I, while those guys are looking for their files, I want to say uh, I have been thoroughly impressed and pleased with the community community. Uh, commenting and engaging with us and talking to us that is probably one of the coolest things that has happened um uh for this project or any project actually uh we put a lot into this and in the community is so quiet most of the time um it's hard to figure out where the where the wind is blowing from basically um so i have a picture here that i can share so i'll start with sharing my screen yeah Let's see. That's one. There it is. Okay, there it is. Conveniently, I found it at the exact same time. Yeah. So I've got one in here. I believe I've got that screen up. So. Do you? I think I think James has to pop it in though. Uh, you have to turn on share screen at the bottom. I did. Yeah, I have it shared also well, and it's not showing. Hmm, yeah, that's did did when I showed the writer that showed up right. You yeah. should have gotten a secondary window that asks you to choose the screen. Ta-da! There we so, go. It was hiding in the back. So this is uh, this is uh, affectionately known as beer cake. Um, this beer is our cake. this is this is our sauropod with his goofy beer hat on. Uh, because he's having a good time, and especially since the uh, mobile pack version looks like a mobile brewery anyway, it's pretty cool. Because he's got the big cakes. He, he gets a plus ten party. attack. He gets a plus ten to attack. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and a plus five to slurred speech. Um. <laughs> uh, minus, minus five to dexterity. Uh, they're not very dexterous to begin with. <laughs> hey, hey, Miguel, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, um, I got to tell you, this was hey, a lot of fun. Hey, hi, Sam, what's up? This was a lot of fun to actually make, um, to have this made. Uh, we never intended to go this route, but uh, all the guys have a, such a great sense of humor about things. So when we started when we started realizing how silly we could be with this, we figured we, we'd throw this together cause, just to blow off some steam. Um, mm -hmm. That's right. What's that? And why not, right? I mean, why, why not, not? right? We should um, have fun with our miniatures. And I've got the up whenever we want to. I yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I think he's got the model. Yeah, let's go ahead and switch over to the model real quick. Oh, yeah, there's the model that. with the kegs. Yeah. Oh, beer keg. I think he's gotten cheated. Those are really small kegs compared to what he's carrying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The hose down the oh, back. <laughs> I mean, those kegs are connected to those other ones. So. You, you, you know what? You know what he's drinking though. The kegs have beer in it. What he's drinking is White Lightning. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna think much of that to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep um. Sleep really good. So we we haven't I haven't finished cutting up this model. We actually were talking about cutting up him, uh, cutting him up last night for uh, 3D printing. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun to get ready and get on the printer. Um, besides this, we've also got um, uh, we've got a protoceratops pulling a wagon, which we're going to put uh, uh, casks or, or barrels into. So we've got that coming along, too. And um, we're also working on setting up all of the pre-supports for everybody. Um, I'm not sure if we've got anything else. Uh, what else did we want to talk about today, guys? 
All right, well, I'm going to share really quick the so they can see the rest of the stuff that we've been doing. Yeah, what else? What do you got? I think, I think, uh, Sebastian. Oh, wait, no, there it comes. Yeah. No, oh, there, right. there we go. <laughs> I found you, Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! What was that? Amazing. So here's all of them that you guys will be able to to get with the, all the packs. Mm -hmm. And you guys, as I go through them, go ahead and talk about them. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to sculpt the the Cyber Two and the uh, and the Stegosaurus. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Thanks, Eric. We agree. We like dinosaurs, and we think they're cool too. <laughs> it, it's been fun because everybody's inner five-year-old has been able to come out for this. Absolutely. Yeah, and and we and we've had and we had a. I don't know as if we can necessarily talk about it, but we did have a, a major organization. Uh, a couple of their uh, staff backed our project. We were really happy finding out about that. But yeah, yeah we, can't that. we can't talk about that. So Miguel, Sin, Oliver, Eric, thanks guys for coming in and hanging out with us for a little bit. Um, oh, here's the prison cart. Uh, Doug, Doug built this one. It's got the swingy doors on Dino it. Dino transport. Dino transport. I, it looks like a prison car. That does not look it like a transport of luxury. <laughs> it's a prison for dinosaurs. Yes, this is the one that I've got uh, a buddy of mine printing right now, actually, which is the Ankylosaur with the uh, armored setup here in the saddle. Um, although I think he's printing it in the other pose. This was a afterwards. This yeah, was exactly. a really challenging model to make. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> and even more fun to try to cut up. And I had I had so many fails on some of those things where the computer did not interpret the cut that I intended for it to do, and it did some weird things, some very very strange stuff. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, most models most models can't just be thrown in the printer to print. They have to be engineered, which means cutting them in pieces that that are more manageable for the printer, but also that are. Um, easier to work with when it comes to painting and assembly. Um, and this one here uh, was yep. was was a really intense. And Chris, and Chris and I were talking about this a lot, trying to make sure that um, that he could solve the various troubles that he was running into. But it, it turned out pretty good because I think that this one, um, I think it has four tail variations. Yeah. Um, and then it has its primary primary loadout, but it also has a second loadout, which has got the saddle on it. And you can see the saddle uh, rising up between the blades. Yeah. Um, primary saddle. Yeah. And that's the, which tail is that? Do we know what tail that's that is? The, that's the axe tail that's on that one currently. Because yeah, he's, he's got three that he's, have actual equipment on them. Uh, a sword. Um, we've got a mace tail and an axe tail that all go on there. And then we've got the plane tail, which doesn't right. have anything on it. Right. That's a lot that, of tail. Yeah. That is a lot of tail. <laughs> You're going to get all the tail with this one. Here he is I, with uh, none of his equipment. I'm hoping that somebody will print out like six of them uh, and flip them left and right and then have them lined up as a uh, like a squad moving across the field. I, I was actually kind of thinking that it'd be neat to uh, magnetize the, the tail ends and have them so that they're hot swappable. Ooh, so yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> idea. Yeah. And this this face has got so this this face or this render has got so much expression for that for that animal there. Yeah. So Sebastian did a great job with the renders with these. <laughs> Hi. Hi guys. I wanna play too. <laughs> he he shares Chris's mustache. Uh, we are part of the same uh, here he is uh I think that's just him with just the high rise saddle. I don't have that one cut up yet. But that will definitely be an option that's in there. It takes some uh, weird engineering, of course, to get that to go in right. Because right now I have it so that the, the saddle actually comes off the top. And then the other two pieces kind of come together um, with all of his legs and stuff being independent. So uh, just to cut down on your your uh, printing headaches. I liked how you what you ended up going with as far as the style of the saddle there because it, it took us a little while to figure out how we wanted someone to be able to ride him 
just because yeah. with all the spikes there and all the blades and stuff, it was an interesting um, struggle to figure out if someone were to what ride this into battle or even just ride them around, how would they do that? Yeah, especially yeah. without hurting yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very smart thing you guys did there to bring that up and have him have that uh, that rider up there. Um, it was really cool. Yeah. And thanks, man. Um, let's see here. Uh, and so... the riders will be able to fit on him. Yes. And the riders will. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to say the uh, the saddle the saddle was actually for the most part modeled by Doug and then I made a few modifications on it to make sure that it fit on the Ankylosaur. So that's pretty much the same one of the packy saddles actually. Now uh, we have a poll going on and right now now I'm not sure James where do we, where can we find the poll? Uh, it's in this um, updates. It's the latest update. Uh, give me a second. I'll tell you which one it is. Okay. You can even point. drop a link into the chat. I don't know. Yep. Here's the Brontosaurus with uh, no armor. I think beforehand we had him up and he had the full uh, uh, basically shield wall look going on there. Yeah, we've been call I've been calling the two poses Stompy and Walky. Stompy, Stompy and Walky. Because he's stomping here and the other one just kind of walking along. It's fun. I, I flick between the two different models in my thing and it looks, it's kind of a silly little it's frame like animation there. <laughs> Say hi from a backer. Hi from a backer. <laughs> so, so uh, right now, us. right now our, our poll is yes. Thank you for backing us. Yep. Uh, thank you, Doug, and thank you for our backers for backing us. Um, let's see here. Awesome. So the poll the poll reads like this. So uh, stretch goal number nine for nine thousand. Uh, we have one of four options: Dino nest eggs. Little baby, baby uh, pterodactyl, um, dino porta potty. Need we say more? <laughs> and the dino fighting pit. Um, the at the eleven thousand, we've got a backer choice goal also, which is um, one of four options. It's a con concession stand for dino snacks, dino blacksmith armor for the dinos. Uh, yeah. Seraphim of War, Female Warriors, uh, cy Cyber Beefcake, a futuristic cyber version of Beefcake's armor. Um, I can't act that one out. <laughs> Be beefcake is our Parasaurolophus, or the duck-faced one that has like the extra turrets and all the other stuff. So the what is duck bell, duck faced, yeah. dinosaur beef? <laughs> he's a very, we should have done a duck faced version where he's like puckering his lips out at people. Uh, <laughs> Only if he were holding out a cell phone. Yeah. Uh, well, his so, words are a little short for that. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking for you guys to uh, to engage on this or to share it with your friends. Uh, I th can can anybody can anybody get in on that? Uh, yes. So you don't have to be a backer to participate in that. Um, Currently, this nine thousand dollars stretch goal, the Dino Nest with eggs, is in the lead, and on the eleven thousand dollars stretch goal, it is the Dino Blacksmith Shop armor for dinosaurs. Okay, that'll be fun to make. That would be fun. It keeps bouncing up and down. It keeps changing because a lot of people are voting. Awesome. It's a race. See, that's 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 See, the that's cool. yeah, that's very cool. Um, so I want to bring up a couple of quick things. Uh, I'm going to reread the because I, I finally found the, the thing I was looking for the stretch goals. So we're we're if we reach eight thousand, we're going to get a loading dock with a crane. That's for that's primarily to load any dinosaurs with their packs. Um, the backer choice will open up, uh, and that's the backer's uh, will pack uh, at nine thousand. Look the at train. the awesome rider that's up here right now on there with his yeah. Uh, Sword and shield there, and matching emblem from uh, the beefcake armor. Do we want to? Do we want to? Do we want to mention his working name? He's mention it. Bob. Say it. Bob. <laughs> He's Sir uh, Sir Robert. <laughs> He's. I, I thought he was Sir Bob Basic. Sir <laughs> his first name is Robert. <laughs> Sir, Sir Robert. Robert. 
So Robert, of basic. basic. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of our files get joking joking nicknames because that's how we kick it around the office. Yeah. <laughs> we have fun. Yep. Uh, so Sir Basic. Yep. Sir. Ba <laughs> Doug and I have been talking about Sir Basic a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Sid hides in the dark. He's a silhouette. You know, he hides. He is a silhouette. Sir Basic steps out in the light. Right. And I, I do want to say. Uh, and, and for, Bob. I, so I, how, can, how can you not love, love that? Yeah. <laughs> I want to say that uh, I forget who made um, Sid, but I want to thank them for making that available. We use that Sid and Hammer Time as our, our two primary uh, test files to help show people scale because we're always familiar with them. So they were made them. by the infamous Matt from Printable Scenery. Oh, Matt from Printable Scenery. Yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, Matt's uh, been involved with us for quite a while, uh, helping me get started originally with uh, OpenLock. Um, I really appreciate that. We're still using OpenLock. We are actually talking about making a, or having conversion uh, tools because there's so many different options out there. But right now we're 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 still using OpenLock, and uh, we use that for all of our terrain stuff. This hey, armor. Uh, for thinking people, we should also make sure uh, we thank uh, Kevin and Jeremy. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Kevin Rank and Jeremy Gozer. Uh, Kevin is from... Um, Maker Fun uh, 3D. Thank you. Maker Fun 3D. And he is he is helping us out with this project. And Jeremy from... Um, uh, Gamescape 3D. Jay, Jeremy from Gamescape 3D has also been directly involved with us. Uh, we worked on some carts for him. It's how we got started on the land train. Uh, Jeremy and I talk uh, pretty regularly. Um, I I always f forget names and stuff, so I really should have had that written down. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, we've actually got, we're really lucky that we've got a really great community of people uh, helping us, supporting us, talking to us, engaging with us. Uh, not just the people that are backing our projects, but also the other community developers out there. Uh, like Matt, Jeremy, and Kevin, uh, and other members uh, like Danny, uh, who have all helped to uh, promote, support, um, encourage, uh, guide, uh, make recommendations. Um, we really, we really want this thing to work, and and those people are all trying to help us get through this. Uh, you know, uh, you know the growing pains of establishing uh, worlds over. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, the 3D printing community in general is unique to itself. Unlike most industries, this community is more of a family. We all help each other. We all work together. Any other industry, you would have artists that, that would not even talk to each other. And in our community, we all work together to make everybody's stuff work. So yeah. for me, this 3D printing community is a family. It may be a distant family, but we're a family. Yeah. I'm that weird uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the weird uncle. Hey, at least you're not a cousin. At least you're not a cousin uncle, right? <laughs> That's Chris. Uncle cousin to you. Uncle sir. cousin. Uncle cousin. Uncle cousin. You might. Yeah, there's a there's a whole funny story behind that with my nieces. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Before they before Probably they your family tree as well. <laughs> family tree looks normal the title is just weird um <laughs> no they didn't we didn't know what whether my nieces were going to call me uncle chris or cousin chris because technically their first cousins once removed or whatever so but the the first the oldest one got a hold of it first and was like yeah uh started saying uncle cousin because we had just kind of done that so it just became my honorary title and now all of them call me uncle cousin chris and, uh, and, is with our, and and it is it is my favorite title. <laughs> um, so uh, right now, guys, we're we're right around um, seven thousand. Uh, we did pick up a cu couple of backers actually while we're streaming. Uh, hey, hey. Woo -hoo. Thanks for backing. Thank you. Exactly. We're looking for more people to uh, share the content because it, the only way we're going to grow is by word of mouth. Um, uh, and in your encouragement, uh, and uh, sharing sharing our content, uh, sharing our images, um, 
we are talking about uh, updating some of the images with uh, a little bit better uh, shots because it looks like um, we've been talking about this a little bit that uh, sadly um, there's some compression issues from Kickstarter. So we're hopefully going to, yeah, we're going to hopefully get you guys some better images. The ones in the stream look really sharp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it has to do with some of the compression on, on some of the other uploads yeah. and stuff that gets a little wonky, but yeah. That's we're, why we're Jeremy is to... recommending increasing the size of the image to yeah. compensate for that compression. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to have to upscale a few things and we're going to make sure that we get those out to you guys. So you guys can kind of check them out a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, when we figure out how we're going to do that, um, guys, uh, uh, hopefully we'll have that in the next, you know, handful of hours or at least, at least by the end of the night. Also, if you guys want to take a closer look at, uh, Sir Basic, um, on the updates is a really great set of photos from Doug and he's, he primed, uh, using some Stano res, which was recommended by, um, for us to use by uh, Gilbert Mondragon over in the Styrene Syndicate. And Gil has always been supportive of me and what we're trying to do here. Um, but we used a, a Zenithal uh, priming technique where you prime it black and then you add uh, gray and then white uh, from the top down to get a baked in lighting effect. Uh, but those photos look fantastic, Doug. Um, really shows off the model, what you'll be getting, what you'll be able to print with. Uh, keep in mind, guys, uh, Doug has put a lot of time into learning how to use his printer so he doesn't have overbake. So this is about as crisp as you can get it. Um, and, and a lot of things that he put into this model when he sculpted it, like the scales on the back and the scoots along the tail, really came out really, really nice. So, But Doug does accept the challenge that anybody wants to try to outdo him. He would love to see it because he would gladly give you the title. Yeah, print it better than I did. Exactly. <laughs> so we can see it better. <laughs> I want to see my models in your hands. That makes me excited. Take pictures and share them. Share, uh, share, tell your friends. Just so you guys know, Sir Basic, Sir Basic is supposed to go in a saddle. So when I'm looking at the photo, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to share here. When he's sitting on the back of the animal, uh, just so you guys know, the the gaps that I'm looking at here. Okay, this is going to go away because he's going to fit the saddle for the animal. Uh, he's not supposed to ride this animal bareback. We didn't design him that way. Um, so don't be worried about that. But these look really, really nice, even on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, and we're, we're also offering, we're also going to be making the version of him where he's lopped off at the waist. Right, where we're going to offer the legs and the upper body separate. So if you have another character that you want to try and fit to our basic character, um, you should be able to do that both with uh, this version and the sci-fi version um, that uh, that I'm working on. Um, they do have different poses, but we are sticking with a basic uh, a basic build uh, that we've got going on. So we will we'll try to make that available to you. Um, this character, by the way, we are. I do have another pose of him. I do love the gear you made for him. That's really cool, man. Uh, I've got two. Uh, so. Um, we were actually talking about uh, some of the things that influence us, uh, Dragon Rider, uh, Dune, um, you know, uh, what would uh, what would a sci-fi or sci-fi or fantasy, super fantasy uh, character look like? So we went with um, heavy armor, bare arms. We, we, we talked about um, different types of kit that characters have. I really, I know that most characters have weapons. Um, for moving around with, for, for playing with. We also talked about the idea that, you know, maybe he's a spotter. You know, you're going to be sitting up so high, you know, how cool would it be to um, show the character with a set of binoculars? So we designed a quick set of binoculars to drop in here. Um, uh, we didn't want to do just the stick. Yeah, we didn't want to do the, just the standard old thing. This is one of the first poses I was trying out for uh, putting him on the back of one of the animals because uh, we were looking at multiple poses uh, for riders. Um, and, uh, you know, gave him a little bit of an air tank, um, gave him some, uh, attachments, uh, gave him a respirator system, um, but wanted to get some bare face going on. Cause again, like Mad Max, uh, or any other apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic futures, uh, we were just trying to play with some different ideas. So yeah, this is where, this is where I started with this guy and he's kind of our, our preliminary character. We want to really get, uh, more characters developed. Um, but this is the first, uh, this is the body 
and the first one we really started going with. And you've seen through um, Doug's character. Okay, Doug's if this guy was Sir Basic, what is the sci-fi guy's name? Hmm. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I, wish, I wish you wouldn't. Um, uh, his name is Clyde Generic. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so so the, the, oh, for, for the record, these two male figures are coming with the Kickstarter as writers. There will also be two female writers as well. Right. Uh, so you'll get four writers that you can work with. Yeah, and and right and uh, what I was gonna say additionally was is that the 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 base frame is the same. So his head is actually the same. He just doesn't have a um, a respirator on here, but he's got the same hair and everything else. Um, so, but well, you could have put a beard on him, dude. I was I was trying to set up my. He needs a grand wizard beard. He needs one, man. He All needs characters one. are better with beards. All characters. Everything is better with a beard. And that's debatable. I mean, I mean, could they imagine no. if he got grabbed by his beard and, and then be led around, you know. Wait, hey, hey, quick vote. Quick, quick. Sure. Yeah. I was going to say, no is, is everything better with a beard? Yes. Sound off in the comments. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. I believe you've been outvoted. You right? always have it. Yeah. Everything is better with a beard. <laughs> and Sebastian's over here, like running his fingers through his beard. Uh, yeah, some beard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh... yeah, shake it at him. Shake it at him. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, also, uh, if you guys haven't already checked out the um, the one page that we're uh, we're showing uh, for the Terror Bird. Um, we are going to be offering stat sheets with uh, with the download for our content. So if you guys want to use these in a 5e campaign or try to make a conversion, um, you'll have a starting place to go from. Um, mm -hmm. Again, Lee Winika did a lot of research to help set this up for us. Um, it's one of the things that um, we really haven't had a chance to talk about too much, but it is really exciting uh, that we're actually be able to make that available. Uh, I know a lot of uh, DMs are probably going to end up writing their own sheets, uh, but at least this is a good starting place. So. Yeah. Oh, there's the terror bird. Yeah, do we want to focus on Doug for a second? Because he's got the. Uh, he started. He started. Started painting the terror yeah, bird. He, he hit it with some. He hit it with some quick colors so that we could get a nice indication of what it looked like. I'm holding my hand up behind it because it, sometimes uh, autofocus cameras don't focus great on miniatures. You're still focusing much better on your hand than the miniature. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh, do you want to do you want to share anything about the printing process or any of the work you did for for that or uh, maybe the painting process? Or... Yeah, that work. Does that work? Well, that's, that's, that's that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys can polish that and make it look nice and. Yeah, yeah. Is this this uh, is really mm -hmm. only um like it was similar to the. Pachycephalosaurus there, I did a zenithal prime with the uh, spinal res. Um, and then threw down a couple quick uh, coats. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, painting with, um, actually airbrushing with washes and glazes, which is, you know, one of those crazy things, but it works as a great little filter to really just pick up the uh, base highlights. So I did a um, overall with a whole bunch of uh, Gilliman blue. Mm -hmm. Did a kind of a purple uh, on his belly, uh, hit his back with some Lotharin blue and did a little bit of a uh, uh, cardboard crimson to his face. Now, is and, Gilliman is the Gilliman a, a brand or is that a? Oh, that these, a, these are sorry. These are all uh, the GW paints. I use mostly the GW paints because I can find them readily, and they're at pretty much hey, any uh, store you go to. Clarify to the people that aren't painters what GW paints are. Oh, GW Games Workshop. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, sorry. Games Workshop, their Citadel brand paints. If you go to your friendly local game store, always support your friendly local game store. They will, uh, if your store carries paints, you probably got about a 90% chance that they carry Games Workshop paints because they've been, they're kind of the standard in the miniatures, they're the standard intro paint in the miniatures painting industry because they make good paint. Yeah, if they don't carry those, they typically carry Army Painter. Those are the two big brands that you're going to see a lot in in your yeah. local game stores. Um, personally, I use I use a few different things, but I do like the consistency out of a lot of the GW paints because since I do a lot of other acrylic painting and stuff anyway, I typically have those paints around. So I I like to dilute and cut down my own paints to use on my miniatures. Um, but uh, that's just a different method on this stuff. And all of these things work out great. It just depends on which medium you're comfortable with. Heavy body that's... acrylics you're using? Uh, I typically use the uh, the heavier body, like uh, professional grade stuff. And then I'm cutting them down with uh, either I'm cutting them down with water and or other other chemicals. It just depends on what it needs for that particular paint. Um, uh I find that the the consistency out of those is about the same as try as getting the GW stuff. And since I already have those, there's no real point in trying to like buy every color like three times kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, I, I like the GWs because they're readily available. I go support yep. my local game shop and pick those up there. Um, exactly. Something else to note is. Um, a lot of people don't have airbrushes, especially if you're just beginning to get into painting or if you're coming to the miniatures world through the 3D printing route, uh, as opposed to the, hey, I'm coming to it through the, I'm going to my game store, you know, because we all come to this through different routes. Uh, you can actually do the Xenothyl priming um, technique that we were talking about to get, you know, this look, because if you look, he's black from beneath gray at an angle, white from top down. You can actually do it with um, a, your traditional rattle can spray paint. Yeah. You just have to have a light touch with it when you're, I mean, when you're uh, laying down the uh, colors other than black. Black, yeah, you prime it like normal. You just yeah. kinda wanna go when you're- Yeah, the other ones, you really wanna respect that six to 12 inch rule <laughs> on that. Make sure that they'll make sure that the humidity is appropriate for that because if your humidity is either too dry, your paint's going to dry before it hits your model, or if it's too wet, it may clog at some point on there. So just be aware of your environment for that stuff. Since I know a lot of people, especially if you're new to the hobby, you're not going to have an area set up inside that's going to be ventilated well enough to be doing that inside. So you're going to be at the mercy of the elements or and, your garage. And with the <laughs> With the Zenithal, with the Zenithal primer, um, one of the things you may want to consider is getting some uh, different types of inks and what have you. And Garage mm -hmm. Kits USA or Garage Kit Colors is got a great set of inks, and they've also got some great tutorials. Um, they're they're regularly promoted by different uh, painting groups um, and and what have you. Um, so. Yeah, I think I've got that right ink that uh, Chris was telling me about. That one sounds yeah. nice. For doing my Xenothels, I typically, instead of running a white paint through my uh, uh, airbrush, because it tends to be really heavy and kind of cloggy on there, um, I'll use inks. And I like the The ink gets a nice, good, uh, good look to it, but you have to be very, very subtle with it. And you have to come in in multiple passes in order to get what you're going to, what, what you're shooting for with that. But the Zenithal works great, especially for any of the washes and, and whatnot, like what Doug was talking about, because you're going to be able to maintain that gradient shift that you already put on your model. So you're doing a lot of your um, value before you actually apply any color on there. But if you go too heavy with the paint or the pigment is very, very opaque, then you're not going to be able to see through any to any of that. And it kind of negates it. Um, it's just it's it's all about a learning curve of trying to figure out which techniques are going to work for the effects that you're looking to get. Yeah, and if if you go with a Zenithal Prime, even if you don't have, I mean, you can. Uh, I've got friends who I taught how to do the Zenithal Prime with the rattle can, where um, they they don't have an airbrush, so they rattle can Zenithal primed it, but then painted you know by hand everything else. Uh, with you can get some really fast, really good looks with uh, just uh, a Zenithal Prime 
and like um, a shade or a very thin down, you know, color. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to doing uh, crates and stuff, a lot of times I will do a Xenophil Prime on them, and then I hit them with like one coat of a brown wash, and it was literally all they needed. Yeah. I think I might have hit them with a little bit of a dry brush of like a bone color to kind of make them pop. But to get a lot, I was making a whole bunch of crates for a, uh, you know, a gaming tournament that I was running and I just needed more terrain. Uh, being able to get a lot of terrain onto your table really fast is a one of the reasons I love 3D printing. <laughs> Oh, it saved my bacon a bunch. But uh, it's also but being able to paint quickly and consistently is, you know, work, work smart, not hard. Yeah, you guys, you guys are looking forward to anything in particular with this Kickstarter. Uh, personally, um, either paint jobs or paint schemes that you want to try or models that we uh, that you haven't personally gotten for yourselves. Or do you guys want to add anything else um, uh, on the project? Um, I'm currently really we're... interested in seeing what our end users do with these and yes. how they modify. I'm like, I'm very interested to see how many people use the riders, uh, what color schemes people end up using, um, because unfortunately, no one was around or alive when you uh, the, to see the dinosaurs in their actual colors. So. Um, all of the color schemes that we would end up using are all speculation. So I just like seeing the full gamut of everything on all of these dinosaurs. Um, everything from fantastical, like uh, peacock style color schemes or, you know, like, you know, macaw style color schemes where they've got like red heads and like blue bodies and that kind of stuff. Anything. I just, I want to see what people decide they're going to do with their dinosaurs. Um yes. Because I know I have ideas for what I would want to do, but I don't want what I would do to influence what everyone else is going to do. And I would love, I would love if people would post their finished products once they've got these things printed and in hand, in in here and share those with the community so that everyone else can see the the awesome paintwork that they're going to do on them. That that speaks to another point about the uh, the end user, like our our backers and whatnot. Do you guys think that there are any mods that you're going to be expecting to see? Because we're constantly trying to get people to mod more of their models. Mm -hmm. So I've heard quite a few people posting um, in regards to Warhammer 40k wanting to make um, Eldar Exodite armies, which those are. Um, I don't know the full background on those. It's been a while since I've been out of the uh, 40k sphere of things for a little while. But my understanding was that the Eldar Exodites were, you know, Eldar who weren't flying around out in space, and they rode around on dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard quite a few people say that they want to use uh, our dinosaurs to put some Eldar on, which I would love to see that on the table, because that just sounds really, really cool. Because yeah. dinosaurs aren't just for fantasy. They're for sci-fi, too. Exactly. Yeah, that would that would actually be pretty cool. I'd also kind of like to see some of like the blades and stuff that I did on these dinosaurs um, be done as like laser swords, laser blades. How would you do that? Because you were talking to me about that the other day, and I didn't fully yeah. understand. Well, like the the big blades, especially on like an ankylosaur and like the triceratops, where he's got like the huge crown all the way around. To do those blades so that they're like lightsaber style instead of like metallic. Yeah, but I, I think I remember, and like I said, I, I didn't fully understand, and we didn't get a chance to talk about it because we were working on stuff. Mm -hmm. But you, I think you said something to the effect of, here's the blade, now we would extend it. And I was like, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to attach a piece of acrylic to it? Are we going to. Um, you could do a couple of different things depending on how you printed it and how you primed it. You could do a lot of interesting stuff. It'd be really neat to uh, put LEDs underneath them and then paint solid around the outside. And if you printed it in a clear resin, you could illuminate it from the interior. And that would be pretty cool. I mean, okay. there's all sorts of weird, interesting things that you can do with this stuff. Like, almost like if, if we were to have, like, you know, for some reason, one of these dinosaurs blew a lot of smoke or something, like have it rigged up with a smoke machine so that it would like pour out of the mouth or something. That would be cool. 
or like on the on this guy on the Quetzalcoatlus, like having a smoke machine up underneath the body so that it emitted smoke that actually went down and around the cloud stuff that's on him would be cool. That would be a cool yeah. mod. Yeah. I've done um, a few mods with my own stuff where um, uh, because I, I love to print in the uh, the clear resin mm -hmm. because well it's what I have the most experience with. But I have a few pieces of terrain that I've made uh, over the years where I've actually taken little um, tea lights from like Ikea and put them inside it and made stuff light up from inside. Yeah. So doing that with uh, some of these with the, the uh, glowing resin, with the clear resin, could make for a really cool mod. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of um, guys, all of our models are going to come with bases, um, and I forgot to mention this. We had a couple of people that really wanted to have um, the acrylic post uh, to support the Quetzalcoatlus. However, we decided that we really wanted to make it look like it was flying and moving through the air and give it a more dynamic pose. Um, the models are not going to be affixed to the bases. They are going to come separate, so you're not going to have a problem there. Um, you can choose to use the bases that we provide, or you can choose to go and buy a base that you want. Most of the bases are uh, semi-custom, but they're supposed to. We're trying to stick with um, one of the dimensions, the either the X or the Y dimension, being a a standard ten millimeter measurement. Um, so they are going to be a little bit bigger or a little bit different than what you're probably used to. Um, oh, Ian has a question. There are uh, there are raptors that will be coming. They are going to be part of the extension packs that are coming out afterwards. Um, so we've got two packs, the predator pack and the herbivore pack, and raptors are on the predator pack for that. Right. Um, They'll be available in the pledge manager. Yep. Yes. That's So that's going to come out later. Um, those guys are going to just be basic dinosaurs. We're not going to offer kits with them. Currently, they may come out in Patreon. They may come out in an expansion Kickstarter. Right now, we haven't decided on that because most of that stuff was decided upon during the Kickstarter when we had so many people ask for things that uh, we weren't currently offering. So be patient yeah. with us. We will give you updates. We will provide more information. Thank you, Ian, for bringing that up. Uh, Ian, Ian, this is the first Kickstarter. Ian's backed with us, but he's been supportive of us for quite a while. He's been very talkative with me over the uh, the course of developing uh, the brand. Um, mm -hmm. So thanks, Ian, for the question. Also, those uh, expansion packs, they will include two of the basic um, setups that we've done on the Kickstarter. That's the basic yeah, will... unarmored and yeah. the armor. Because, yeah. you know, what's a dinosaur without armor? Yeah, exactly. Just for clarification, yep. They will, they will have a plain pose and an armored pose. Um, yeah. Saddle pose and the other poses may come later, but they may be to our Patreon. Yeah. We're definitely not done with dinosaurs because oh, like we. this was so much fun. We all love dinosaurs, and you guys love dinosaurs, and we would love to bring you more dinosaurs that you want to see. Yeah, yeah and, and tell I, us dinosaur if there's a dinosaur that is your favorite dinosaur. Because let's be honest, when we were kids and we all, you know, were you know really big into dinosaurs, everyone had a favorite dinosaur. Yeah. Tell us what that favorite dinosaur was. We will, you know, hopefully we'll add it to the list of what we want to do more of in the future. We will post on Patreon uh, a list of future uh, dinosaurs that we will be considering to do. So if you have one that you want to add to the list, message us, yep. post it on Patreon, post it anywhere. Yep. So, is and we do a lot of those selections by uh, polling and whatnot. So if you have a favorite dinosaur, we got to get people to vote on them. Hold on a second. Uh, so Ian is asking, is Beer Cake and the Weapons Platform Dino Post Kickstarter as well? No, those are part of the primary. Those are part of the primary campaign. Um, so those will come with your um, files when the Kickstarter releases. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, the the ones that are post Kickstarter are are additional things that we never considered doing, or at least we we weren't per intending on offering with this. Community 
until the community voiced that those were specific dinosaurs that they wanted. They were not part of this initial Kickstarter. So those those two packages will be the stuff that comes out afterwards. But that you will get the weapons platform and the, the beer cake thing at uh, at the end of this one when we roll out all the files. So indeed, Ian, you get beer cake. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that everybody I'm hoping that everybody has gotten their questions out. Uh, had an opportunity to see the things that we're offering. Also had an opportunity to share with their friends or poke their friends, poke and prod their friends to help promote the campaign. Like I said before, word of mouth is really going to help us grow this project so that we can... Uh, Ooh, if Sebastian showed us his Stegosaurus in reality. Ooh. Right? Oh, there it is. Yeah. He's letting his hand. Um, I, one of the other questions that came up that I do want to mention, somebody asked us if we're, these are uh, scaled for 28 millimeter to 32 millimeter. Um, and the answer to that is simply yes, these are all designed for those type of characters and those types of games. Um, so as we make more, more models and more characters, um, that's primarily what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, we are also trying to stick with real world uh, dinosaurs. So as we learn new things about dinosaurs, we are going to try and incorporate them into the, the builds that we're going after. Exactly. Um, well, and an example, Eric, go over the fact about the new findings that have been accepted by paleontologists across the world about the T-Rex. Oh, right. The texturing, uh, uh, the texturing for the T-Rex, uh, the, the, there's been some pretty extraordinary things. Uh, T-Rex most likely did not have feathers, um, which is kind of nice. Um, and the their primary findings for this are one is that they've got they've got a whole bunch of skin samples. Now it doesn't cover the entire animal, but it's it's large portions of the animal. They have skin samples. The other is is the the more scientific one, which I really liked was is that when an animal gets to a certain size, if you take for instance the uh, African element elephant specifically, they require less. Um, uh, insulative covering like fur or hair or quills or feathers or any of that other stuff. So they believe that since Tyrannosaurus rex and um, the, a lot of the sauropods were so large, uh, they really just had no need uh, for those things because their their regulated uh, temperatures um, uh, were ba their their temperatures were easily more easily controlled because they were just massive. Yeah. Uh, Whales are another good example because if you you look at a lot of the larger whales, they have no feathers on the or feathers. They have no hair on them. But they then you have go to a lot of different things though. For for aquatic animals like that though, they have a relatively thick layer of blubber, which is additional right. fat that covers most of their body, and that helps to keep them insulated. Um, right. With land animals, you don't necessarily need that. A matter of fact, you actually need more mechanisms to cool off. Like the elephant's ears and stuff act as a radiator in general for the animal. Um, I would assume that something like the Stegosaurus would have used its fins in a very similar fashion, where it would use those fins to either warm up or cool off its blood flow um, by having the blood kind of run over those things and being able to either independently fan them around or do those kind of things. But with like the T-Rex, he's such a large animal, just like the sauropods, that if you put fur on that thing, it would overheat and die. Yeah. yeah. So um, basically, basically in a non-scientific view, mm -hmm. just a game review like me, mm -hmm. T-Rex is going to be fucking awesome looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to look like a giant, a giant chicken. It will not be like a giant that. chicken. No, it will look like the scary <laughs> T-Rex from Jurassic Park, basically. Yeah. Not Actually, not even that. It looks more like a giant reptilian. The, the, the skin is a, a cross between oh. snake scales and the um, like plates that are on chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a little bit tighter. Yeah, yes. a, lot, a lot of small scales. A lot of small yeah, there was a really interesting artwork that I saw for some of that stuff. They also did a much better job at actually giving it um, realistic looking proportions in general, right. as far as like fat distribution and muscle and whatnot. And they had some artists actually go through and do essentially all of the entire muscle system on the, on the skeletal remains to, to a level that made it look, um, realistic in comparison to modern day living animals that we can compare them to. Right. So, um, which, a lot of times when you look at dinosaurs from the old stuff, they're um, they're kind of emaciated in a lot of the bony mm. protrusions and stuff. And that's not necessarily true, because if you were to look at like a gorilla skull in comparison to what an actual gorilla looks like, it's very, very different. 
Yeah. Have you, there's been a bunch of um, posts I've seen recently on the, hey, here is the skull of this animal. Here is, you know, maybe how an alien paleontologist would just do it. And there's this terrifying, horrible, scary, emaciated. Yeah. And then, and here's a hippo. It's like, eh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the, the hippo one was really, really scary. Um, yeah. Hippos. Maybe, gorillas there there's a few of them that i've seen like that where they did that that same thing that doug was talking about because i think he showed me that link yeah elephant was really one of the scary ones <laughs> well it's because the soft tissues don't fossilize so yeah. if we had fossils of the elephant well we don't have there there are indicators that we know that they have extrapolated for, you know, mammoths and mastodons that, oh, this is similar enough to what we have now. It's related to that. And they can see the muscle attachments in the skull. Mm -hmm. But if we did not have a modern day example of that, we wouldn't know that it has a big, long noodle, this big, long noodle of muscle hanging from its face. Yeah, really? I think it's like a ridiculous number of muscles in it, too. Yeah, you know what you know what got me thinking about this. The it got me thinking though was when we were looking at that was, what would T Rex or Velociraptor look like if it had you know like elephant ears, for instance? <laughs> I mean, how bizarre, how bizarre no. would those animals look? You know, because we 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 got this giant skull with all these teeth in it, and we're thinking. You know, it's stripped yeah. down, and they don't they don't have do they do they have ears, or they just have a hole in the side of their head, you know? Yeah, and that's that's one of those other things that we we're not a hundred percent sure on in general. I mean, because our closest representation is going to be like the Komodo dragon, and if you look at him, he's got a lot of like belly dragon kind of skin and stuff, especially around like the way his arms move and that kind of stuff for his biomechanics. So, I mean, that there's no telling. 100% what an actual dinosaur would look like unless we've got like skin indentations because right. I think the ankylosaur actually did have they they found a few years ago a full actual fossilized representation of what the exterior of the animal looked like right in they actually had effectively a mummified yeah exactly ears which was insane if you've actually seen the photographs from this thing oh yeah it's super cool well yeah, that was I, it was so cool about the T-Rex because in the uh, Paleontology International Journal, they're right up on it. They theorized that the T-Rex actually had skin like a snake that actually changed color by its angle. Ooh. So it opens up a whole lot from an artist standpoint of what we could do with it. So it's kind of got like the color shift thing going on? Yes. Yes. Ooh. Like could you imagine if it had one of those, those frills that opened up around its neck? Uh, mm. Like a Dilophosaurus? Yeah. And then it like screeched at you and spit acid tar stuff in your oh. face. <laughs> See, what I want to know is how they figured out that it spat acid tar stuff, or if that was them just talking out there. I head. think that though was them spitballing because yeah, I don't think there's any way that you'd be able to. Spitballing? Yes. Spitballing. Uh-huh. You saw uh, what I did. Uh, uh, uh. It was subtle, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, definitely, for, uh, I think kind of walking the line between birds and um, lizards is really the way to go with it because they've proven that, you know, birds can't were evolved from theropod dinosaurs. And the whole, like, one of my favorite uh, places in the world, uh, the Field Museum in Chicago, um, Sue the T Rex was actually the. Um, fossil where they first found evidence of the effectively what is the wishbone and which helped them to prove that modern day birds had evolved from theropod dinosaurs right which is really cool that is that is really cool um now i got one more thing to point out before you take take off eric on your what you're going to say these expansion packs that are coming after the Kickstarter, they will be within 60 days after the Kickstarter. They're not going to be released immediately. Yeah, we, we, we've only, make. yeah, we haven't even really gotten very far with, yeah, with the we don't have development time. The hunting pack and the herbivore herd. Yep. So, where can they get those guys? Where can they go? 
They in the Kickstarter will have a link posted in the updates when the uh, pledge manager opens, which will be two weeks after the Kickstarter, and it's going to be hosted by my mini factory. Yep. We're real pleased with that, and you'll be able to go there, redeem your your um, files, and be able to add assets to your order. Right. Uh, just so you guys know, we are using a new pledge manager. If we do run into any technical difficulties, you know, just give us a little bit of time and patience. We will work it out. Um, let us know of any problems. Yeah, let us know of any problems. We won't know until you guys talk to us. Um, but just yeah, be aware. Thing, isn't it? What? Uh, my mini factory being a pledge manager, that's really new, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, we're we're part. We're I think we're part of the their beta beta release for that. They actually, uh, we're, they worked with us closely on uh, pursuing that um, that There's new only tool. Projects currently on it. Oh, right? that's but, cool. Yeah, but it's growing. Um, and we wanted to try it out uh, because because um, we were working with Becker Kit and yep. uh, my mini factory talked to us about it, and we we decided to give them a shot and see what what uh, they could do for us. So yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to add anything else? Uh, because we've talked about a lot today, and we've shown a lot. We've gotten pretty much everything covered that I can think of. I, th I think we're pretty Go good. Tweet and retweet and unlock the last of the social goals. Exactly. Yeah. Retweet. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell all your friends. Mm -hmm. Tell your family members. Tell everybody. Go put a soapbox oh. on the street corner and yell. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't make a sign. Make a sign and spin it on the street corner about how you love dinosaurs and dinosaurs. <laughs> Is there an equivalent to internet sites uh, street sign spinners? Oh my like gosh! Wait, wait, could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody out there just. I'm sure there's a marketing thing. Isn't that what Twitter is? Maybe. So um, might be the problem with Twitter. Also, uh, yeah, keep talking to us, guys. Uh, if there's if there's something that you're looking for, something you want to know about, uh, something that you missed, uh, please let us know. Please check out the updates. We are trying to get more content put up. Um, are you guys releasing a dino early so we can print it? That might help grab people to uh, not uh, the the free dinosaur, which is um, beefcake. Um, isn't cut up yet, but we were. Well, maybe we'll do that. With we should with, be able to have that done before the end. Yeah, I think that maybe we'll, we can we can put beefcake out probably um, before the last ten hours. We've got sixty three hours. I'll probably get beefcake done um, today or tomorrow. We can put that out with a with uh, ten hours before it close. Um, you if it? you send today? a list. Today? Oh my God! Beefcake's coming out today. Sorry, <laughs> I want to bring beefcake too. All right, fine. I'll stop what I'm doing and work on beefcake. Um, beefcake, it up. <laughs> if you're if you're part of the Kickstarter or you signed up for the mailing list, you can get beefcake for free. I will make that avail. We'll make that available. Uh, I'll print it asap for the group. Thank you, Ian. Um, yeah, so I will. The unsupported version, though. We're not doing pre supports in that quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. we may not. Yeah, we'll 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 see but about that. What he's doing. Um, he's an old we'll, friend. The model, the model will, the model will come out soon, very soon. So yeah, we'll get a model out before close. Um, so those of you that did sign up for the mailing list or are participating in the Kickstarter <laughs> will have access to Beak Cake. If you're not signed up for the mailing list, it's really easy. Uh, James, where can they sign up for the mailing list? It's in the updates. It's in the uh, Kickstarter. You just click on the image of Beefcake, and it'll take you to the sign-up sheet, and you will get a copy of Beefcake as soon as it releases. Right. Yay! Free Beefcake! So, yeah. You should get notified of all future Kickstarters, additional dinosaurs, and all the other cool things that we work on. We got and, no. and we only send out important notices, so you will not get a bunch of spam from us. Yeah. Um, also, guys, you know, uh, because some people are finicky about that. Just a <laughs> just a pre uh, just a pre 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 announcement. Um, we've already started setting up the next Kickstarter. Uh, the the core product for the next Kickstarter has already been printed, and Chris is actually getting ready to 
uh, finalize assembly and start working on painting. Um, we're really not ready to announce it yet, but be prepared. Um, we are getting ready to do our next thing already. We will have some stuff for you at the end of this Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. we, we will have some cool stuff to show you guys to get you kind of kind of interested in it. Right. When will then be now? Mm -hmm. Also, also be aware, be aware. The next the next project's key element comes in one Chris unit. <laughs> yes, it does. It is one Chris unit high. <laughs> it's big. No, actually, I'm short. So <laughs> he's not it's that big short. For a <laughs> big for a miniature, short for a person. <laughs> All right, guys, we've been doing this for almost an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I think it's time yep. to wrap it up. Yep. And get back to work. So, All right. so good night, Grace. Remember, guys, Kickstarter.com, World's Over Run, back it, share it, tell everybody. Like it. Tell everybody. Mm -hmm. And just follow us for future. Uh, future models and send us uh, uh, your feedback. Tell us how you feel, what you guys think. That's, Thank you guys for everybody that has backed us. Um, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank we'll you. you. Thank you, everyone. Time. As Sebastian pointed out, you can join the mailing list. You can follow us on Patreon. You can also follow us on Kickstarter. It's very simple. Just click on the logo at the top and say follow. And then you'll get notices every time we release a new product. So it's easy. Just do it. ECS Pie. Yep. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Good night. And remember, everyone, elevate your gaming. Elevate your game. Always. <laughs> I'm here waving like an idiot. <laughs>